Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Grace as we gather around God's Word and today at His table. Happy Father's Day! What a great joy to gather on this uh, Father's Day. We want to just uh, thank the Lord for uh, all the fathers that are worshiping with us today. And uh, it's um, one of those moments that is uh, both joyous, but also uh, I know that there are some of us gathered today uh, that are missing uh, fathers and uh, or as fathers missing children and so we pray God's uh, presence and peace and comfort as uh, we live in the hope and the joy uh, of who our God is and um, and what he's done for us just a few things to keep in mind as we enter into this week tomorrow starts vacation Bible school here at Grace as we uh, share uh, the life that God has for us in Jesus with all the kids that are coming. Uh, we're somewhere around 150. I think 130 of those are preschoolers and kindergarten. So pray for them. <laughs> it's not that bad. But we got a lot of kids. This place is going to be hopping the next few weeks. Um, I do need a little bit of help. Uh, after, after worship, I need a few hands. Uh, we need to move a little bit of furniture. We kind of transform the gathering area. And, uh, and we need to kind of get this area ready up here. So if there's a few that can hang around to help us move things, 15 minutes or less, uh, we'll be on our way. So just uh, be mindful of that as, as we go. I, we could use the help. Also this week, Wednesday, is Gleaners. Uh, as we show God's love to our community, uh, Gleaners uh, is we're serving from um, 1.30 to 2.45. So you can uh, invite those who could use a little extra help. Groceries are expensive. We're looking forward to serving our, those in need this coming Wednesday. Uh, okay, uh, one thing you'll notice today, Gary is on vacation. He's floating down the river somewhere in Amsterdam. I don't know where, I don't know where he is. Do you know where exactly he is? Budapest. So... Um, all the music today is recorded, and uh, we can set up some chairs in the back for all of you coming in. we got plenty of chairs to do that. We'll get you settled. It's good to have a church full um, this morning. So uh, we also have some special music today. Celise Cardin is going to share uh, the gift of song with us. We're thankful for that. All right. Well... Uh, this All throughout June, we've been uh, considering the Holy Spirit. The first week, uh, we've asked the question, where is God? Where is he present? And we talked about the, the Spirit's presence. And then last week, we talked about and considered uh, the question, who is the Holy Spirit? And so last week was the Spirit's person. And beginning today, we're going to ask the question, what does the Spirit do? This, what, what is God up to in my life? And we're going to answer that question in a two-part sermon. Uh, part one today, uh, the Spirit's work. The Spirit's work. And then next week, we'll, we'll fill out uh, a continuation of what God is up to in your life uh, as you discern the ways that God is uh, shaping your life into the character and image of Jesus. So we pray God's blessing as we consider the Holy Spirit today and the Spirit's work in your life and mine. So with that said, let's stand and call our hearts to worship. And we begin in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join together in our opening song.
Father, when Jesus was about to leave his disciples to return to you, he promised to send a helper and comforter to work with us until he returns again. We thank you that we were not abandoned when Jesus ascended into heaven to sit at your right hand. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is now present working with us here and now and daily intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. We thank you that through the Holy Spirit our faith is strengthened through your word and sacrament. Please help us to follow the Spirit's lead in our lives today and always through Jesus Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Amen. Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we have the privilege of coming before our Lord in a time of confession. Hear these words from Psalm 51. <clears throat> have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I declare with great joy this morning, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join together in our song of praise.
You may be seated. Let's have all the kids come forward for the children's message. Come on up, you guys. Hi, Ivy. Hi, sweetheart. Good morning. Come on up. There we are. Hi, Carter. Good. Oh. We got room. Nice. All right. Okay. When do your fathers tell you it is time for a bath? When do you, well, when, do, when is it time for a bath? When you get dirty. Do you get dirty? How do you guys get dirty? Jumping in mud puddles. How else do you get dirty? Playing in the mud. Yeah. What else? Playing outside. Yeah. You get grass stains. What else? Playing in the dirt. In the muddy, muddy. How about the sandbox? You get sand in your ears. Yeah. In your shoes. How else do we get dirty? Yeah. Yes, those are things that are dirty. What do you got, Elliot? Uh, jumping in the water. Jumping. Well, yeah, it depends if the water's clean or not, right? Yeah. So you need baths. How often do you get a bath? Once a month? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, as a kid, it kind of varies, you know. But, you know, eventually, for us adults, probably need to take a, a bath or a shower every day. We need lots of cleaning up because things get dirty. We have a way that God talks about what he does for us. And we have this wonderful gift that God gives to help us know about what the work that God does in your life. And that is baptism. And in baptism, we have water, right? Remember that? Water was put on you? <clears throat> yeah. Just... You remember, yeah, we, I put, well, Pastor Mike got you all wet. Yeah. So baptism is that time where God says, you're my child, I love you. I'm going to let you know that you're loved and forgiven. And baptism, that moment where we think about the water that God uses in our baptism that we know that I am a child of God. Can you say that with me? I am a child of God. Yeah, the water, cleansing water of baptism makes you a child of God. Isn't that awesome, Clara? Yeah, very good. <laughs> okay, all right. All you children of God baptized in his name, you can go back to your seats. Thanks for coming up. Now God continues to speak in his word, and Roger Beecher is our reader today. Roger? Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful day to listen to God's word. So the Holy Gospel comes from John 16. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advo advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, <clears throat> he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin righteousness and judgment but sin because people do not believe in me or about sin because people do not believe in me about righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned this is the gospel of the Lord praise to you O Christ thank God The 
Holy Spirit, part one of the Spirit's work. You know, there are those, uh, those, those uh, toys that seem to cross the generations and that even uh, toys that were a part of my life I see today still being a part of children's lives. Maybe you remember and can identify what those toys are uh, for you. But the one that comes to mind is this, uh, the children's molding clay that we affectionately know as Play-Doh, right? Yeah, Play-Doh. It's still so fun uh, to play with today. And the kids, uh, you know, take, the, take that Play-Doh and they, they kind of mold it and shape it. In fact, I remember uh, when we had Play-Doh, there was this uh, kind of a contraption that you would put the, the Play-Doh in, and then you would put these things that would mold that would mold the Play-Doh, and you kind of press down, and there was a square mold, and so you kind of put the play you press down, and it would come out in a square, or there was the star, you know, mold that you put in, and it'd come out, and it'd be star, come out, and then my favorite was the spaghetti mold. You know, you freeze it down, you press down, and you get Play-Doh spaghetti, which to my taste is a little salty, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but remember that as a kid, tasting Play-Doh, right? And so not as good as mom's uh, spaghetti as, uh, you know, Eminem would say or whatever, but yeah. But I think one of the reasons that, that Play-Doh is something for for child's play, is that it reflects um, who we are as children made in the image of God. Because this is who our God is, as one who takes the dust of the earth and shapes and molds human life. Adam made and created from the dust. In fact, The way that God would be described throughout Scripture is that he is the potter and we are the clay. And as we consider, what is God up to in your life and mine? How do I discern and know how God is working in my life? We're going to use this image of the sculptor spirit, that the Holy Spirit's work in your life and mine is to shape and to mold our lives into the image and likeness of Christ our Savior. And just like you kind of put those kind of molds into the, the what's called in the Plato world, the fun factory, you press it down, that's what that thing is called, the fun factory that makes the stars and the spaghetti. We're going to consider five different ways that God molds, God the Spirit molds and shapes our lives. Different models of his shaping our lives into the likeness and character of our Savior Jesus. And so uh, it's from this book from Leopoldo, Leopoldo Sanchez called The Sculptor Spirit. And uh, Leopoldo, Dr. Sanchez is one of our professors at uh, Concordia Seminary. And this is what he writes. Like a sculptor who molds a mass into its desired shape, the Spirit's sanctifying work lies in shaping Christ's image in person. And there's five models. Today we're going to consider two. And then next week we'll we'll do the last three. But this week, the, the molding and the shaping, the image, the model is the renewal model and the dramatic model. First, the Holy Spirit works to shape our lives into the image of Jesus as he renews. As the Spirit renews our life. The Bible speaks about our life in these ways. In Romans chapter 6, it talks about the old Adam. 
the old man with its sinful realities and desires. And if you remember what happened to Adam as he fell into sin, he went to hide. Filled with shame, confused, uncertain about now what's, how this is all going to work in relationship to God, his God and to his wife and family. And the, and the Spirit's work is, to, is for that old man to be buried, to be put aside, to be buried deep so that we can live and walk and be shaped alive in our Savior Jesus. And so we think about, I want you to ask yourselves the question, what is it in my life that I'm trying to hide? What is it that I'm, that's causing me to hide in shame? What, what is it? What sin in your life do, needs to be buried deep? Right? So that we can see the Spirit now bringing life and newness and shaping us to be alive in Christ and to walk in the newness of who we are in our Savior Jesus. That the old man buried and the new life lived. The way that that happens is found in the Spirit's work in and through our baptism. Where that water of renewal, as Titus 3 speaks of, the water, the renewal of the Holy Spirit right, in our baptism, so that we know who we are. We are alive in Christ, children of God. Uh, you know, there's a, a mo new movie that's coming out. I know the, the, the movie that everyone talking about is, is Top Gun Maverick. I think all of you probably have seen that one or whatever if you want to relive the 80s, which I don't know. I'm not sure I want to do that. But, um. but the new one coming out is Lightyear, right? From the, the, the Toy Story, Buzz Lightyear, that's the one coming out. And there is this moment in the original Toy Story movie where Buzz Lightyear, um, this toy, is, finds himself in despair. He realizes that he's just a toy, that he can't really fly. He finds himself, along with the other toy, Woody, that's, that... Uh, that they're in the, now in the care of Sid, the neighbor, who is pulling apart and tearing apart all of these toys. And Buzz Lightyear doesn't know what to do. And he just is lamenting and he's just realizing the depth of what is coming to his mind. And he says, I'm just a toy. What's the use? Let Sid just rip my life apart. It doesn't matter. And Andy says, oh, no, no, no. You are er but, or Woody says, no, no, you're not just a toy. Never say you're just a toy. And he, he tells him to look on his boot, on the underside of his boot. And it is there underneath, on his boot, that is inscribed the word Andy. The name of the one to whom Buzz belongs. And he says, you are not just a toy. You are Andy." Toy. It's a defining moment in the movie. And so it is in the Spirit's work in our life that you are not just one that grapples with sin and, try and hides in shame. You are one baptized child of God, the name of your, the one to whom you belong. This is defining work of God in our life. Hear his name, 
has been written upon your heart. You belong to God. That is how the Spirit of no longer see the shape of your life as old, tired, despairing, but see the shape of your life renewed as you belong to God as his child. And then the other way, the other way that God, the Spirit, shapes and molds our life is what is called the dramatic model. You see, in Jesus' life, as we see Jesus being baptized, the Spirit descends upon him. He receives the Spirit, and then the Spirit leads him out into the wilderness. It is there we see the Spirit's forming and shaping work. Because there in the desert, there's a conflict. There's a struggle. It's tempt- Jesus is being tempted by evil, conflicted with Satan, struggling through it all. And then we find Jesus in the garden. Once again, in a dramatic conflict with Satan over... <clears throat> Whether Jesus is to stay in the will of God or if Satan tempts to abandon God's will. And it is there in the garden that Jesus prays, not my will, but thy will be done. And it is in those desert kind of garden moments in your life and mine that God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is at work shaping, molding. Jesus struggled with temptation. We see him not only victorious, but then also, as he's victorious over evil, he's also with you and me in our struggle. So in the desert, Jesus holds on to the promises of God. And in the garden, he prays. And so it is God's shaping, forming work in your life. What's your struggle? What's tempting you away? And it's the Holy Spirit that shapes and molds our lives by the very promises of God in the midst of it all. It's God using those moments of struggle and pain and hurt and heart. He does not leave us alone in those times. But he is shaped, he's with us, shaping and molding us even in those garden moments in prayer. That we would pray for the intercession of the Holy Spirit to to comfort us, to be present with us. There is this picture in The Pilgrim's Progress, that that book by John Bunyan. Pilgrim's Progress is actually the second best-selling book of all time. The first best-selling book of all time? The Bible. Number two is Pilgrim's Progress. And the main character of this allegory of of a Christian's life, the main character, his name is Christian. He's representing your life and mine as Christians. And God gives to Christian a breastplate, armor, to face whatever comes his way. And as soon as God gives him the breastplate, this armor of a breastplate, the devil shows up. And the first thing that Christian wants to do is to run. He wants to run. But then he realizes with the breastplate, there's no, this armor, there's no protection in the back. If he's to run away, he leaves himself vulnerable. But what God has given is the breastplate of faith so that he can face whatever comes his way. 
And this is what the Spirit's work is in our life, shaping, molding us so that we have the breastplate of faith to face whatever life's bring. And it will come with its struggles, with its temptations, with its pain, and with its heartache. But the Spirit's work in your life is to never leave you alone. It is a daily repentance and renewal. Daily. It is always uh, <clears throat> this dramatic kind of tension in the struggles of life. The Spirit's work to shape us by the promises of God, that He is with you, that He loves you, that He'll never forsake you, that in fact, what happened to Jesus in His death, it ends in resurrection and life, and in the midst of your pain and the heartache, even in death, you hold on to the promise that God's love is stronger than death, that there is life in resurrection, even in death. And we have an advocate to which we can pray in the midst of our struggle. The Spirit's work is there shaping and molding it. May you see it and know it and discern it in your life today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to stand and confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he descended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated as we bring our blessings now before our God in a time of offering. <clears throat> Thanks, Rob. Let's pray. Lord, we bring to you this morning just a portion of that which you've blessed us with. We pray that you would use these, our offerings, that grace that others might know of your work of renewal and regeneration and reconciliation and how you, O oh Lord, are victorious even over sin and death and evil. So, Lord, continue to shape and mold our lives into the character of Christ. May these offerings be gifted and used to that end. In Jesus' name, amen. Today in our thoughts and prayers, we will be remembering the family of Lorraine Laval. Uh, Lorraine was called to her heavenly home and given Christian burial yesterday here at Grace. <clears throat> so we certainly uh, pray God's blessing upon the entire family that he would wrap his uh, loving arms around them and hold them close. So with that, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> O King of kings and Lord of lords, you call out to every nation of the earth seeking repentance and justice, even as they rebel against your will. Work repentance in all civil leaders. Use them to defend the weak and to punish the guilty, that the church may have free course to preach the gospel in all of its truth and purity. And Lord, you are a loving and compassionate Father from whom all fatherhood is named. We give you thanks for earthly fathers. 
Give them confidence in their vocation and zeal for their task to take care of their families faithfully. Make them examples to their children of godly life and love of your word. Bless their work of bringing up children in the fear and instruction of the Lord and give them comfort of your absolution over all their shortcomings. Merciful Father, you are the great physician of body and soul. You chasten and you heal. Please hear our prayers for healing, strength, and peace of mind for those that we now name. We especially remember the family of Lorraine Laval, that, God, you would reach out to them and comfort them in their time of mourning now and in the days ahead. And, Father, we bring before your throne of grace those that we now name in our hearts. Father, give all the assurance that their prayers are heard and heal them according to your good and gracious will. Merciful God, the prophet Isaiah spoke of the new wine full of blessing that we will not be destroyed. Grant us faithfully to eat and drink our Lord's own body and blood given in the fellowship of this altar. And Heavenly Father, we are confident that you hear all of our prayers. So we commend all for whom we pray into your loving arms trusting in your goodness and mercy to give us all that we need for this life and the next. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
God's forgiveness and his peace. Amen. Let's remain standing for our closing song. again to all you dads happy father's day enjoy your day and now receive god's blessing and benediction the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace amen, amen. go in peace serve the lord thanks be to god have a great week everybody